Alrighty guys, good morning. Madman Mandela coming at you live in the Garden Eagle Rock here in beautiful Alabama. This week has been a freaking blur for me, but uh, it's been nuts. But anyway, needless to say, Mr. Anthony Pierce. Okay, Anthony went ahead and he uh, purchased a console off the website from us. And Anthony, here it is. It's all done, man. Alright, it's got a 500 gig drive in it. Ace V3. Okay, up on the line servers, along with the 10-day trials of Purge, you got BO2, MW3, and Ghost All Post as well. Alright, so we're going to boot this thing up, and then what this is going to be is actually an instructional video on how to use this thing to get it up on your network for the first time, okay? And the system booted, of course. We will sync a controller up, and we're not going to boot into the stock dashboard. What we're going to boot into is FSD Dash, which is a, a variation of a dashboard, okay? And once that happens, you're going to see your plugins come across the screen in the bottom. You're going to see, as you can see, there you are. Welcome to Alliance. You're up on the server. You're going to get another notification from Purge letting you know that you're off on it. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through this thing. Okay. So here we go. All right. Now, let's see here. All right. Bring it over here. Okay. Under emulators. Okay. You have, uh, you have a bunch of emulators on here. FCEUX is also NES emulator. Okay. For Nintendo Entertainment System. All right, then you have Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Then you have MAME, which plays pretty much everything. You have Genesis Plus 360, okay, for Sega Mega Drive, you know, Sega Genesis systems. And then, of course, you have Game Boy Advanced, all right? So there's a bunch of emulators on there for you. All right, then you have original Xbox Classic games. There's a bunch on there for you, as you can see, and then some. All right, and these are all original Xbox games from the original Xbox back in 2002. All right, they play on here as well. I'm going to explain how to do that in a little bit. All right, under our homebrew section, we have the tools which reside on the console for you to use, okay, and utilize. Uh, we have NAND Flash and all kinds of stuff on here, okay. Uh, very important and pertinent to the system. And then, of course, we have our Xbox Live Arcade, okay. We have a bunch of arcade games on there, as you can see. It just goes on and on and on. All right, and then, of course, we have our regular Xbox 360 games, okay. I'm going to start off with Advanced Warfare. And what we'll do is we will work our way through all of them right here. Okay, as you can see, there's all the titles, all kinds of crazy titles and everything, and all the stuff that we all know and love and play. All right, and we'll wind up back in Advanced Warfare. There you go. Now, we'll back out of there. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll go to the original dashboard. We'll go to the homebrew section right here. We're going to go to the original dashboard. So I'm going to hit that and hit it with A. And then what's going to happen is you can see a screen pop up. There you are. Oh, man, it's now, you'll have 30 days when this thing ships out, okay? Just to let you know, all right? But anyway, welcome to the Lions Live. You're on let you're on dashboard down to 559. You have 20 reserve days left. Got it good, okay? We'll back out of there. We'll back out of there, and you will see that it's up. It's on Lions Live, okay? There you go. All right, and then, of course, we'll pull up the guide button. And here's our beautiful eyeball pleasing HUD. And over in our fifth tab, we have our beer two cheats, ghost cheats, my over three cheats, my over two cheats, okay? So on and so forth. Now, to disable them, hit A to enable it. Hit A. Okay, it comes enabled when you first start up the console. All right? So you can disable them if you have other menus on there that you want to use and you don't need the off hosts or whatever, okay? So anyway, we'll go back to FSD Dash now by going to Xbox Home. All right, and this is going to bring up FSD Dash once again. And I'm going to show you that there is multiple dashboards on this thing as well. Okay, I put them on there. A lot of people, they like FSD. A lot of people like Aurora. A lot of people like FX Menu. A lot of people like XDX Menu. Well, it's got all of them, okay? So what we'll do is I will uh, go ahead and show them to you through uh, Dash Launch. All right, and the Dash Launch is set up. Okay, as you can see, we'll go to Paths. And then under Paths, you will see Freestyle. Okay, Button B, if you hold it down, it's going to boot it's going to boot into fx menu okay you know i mean so uh you know if you hold it down while the system is booting it'll boot into fx menu okay button y is going to be your stock dashboard okay so if you hit button y you're going to boot right to the stock dashboard to the original dash left bumper if you hold it down while it's booting it's going to boot into aurora xcx okay really simple okay so now all right let's say you want to set it to aurora okay now aurora is already set up like a like freestyle dash okay um, what we'll do is we'll go to default and we can change the default and what it boots up into. Now you can leave this blank so it just boots the stock dashboard if you want, okay? But um, if you want to for all intents and purposes, you can boot to either dashboard, whatever you want to do just by setting the default. Setting the default is this easy, okay? You highlight it, hit A, okay, and then it's in the it's in the freestyle folder, okay? So we're going to hit A once again at the double dot folder. That's going to bring us up to the root folder. 
Okay, as you can see, everything is laid out properly, with named properly and everything. Nothing scattered all over the place. All right, we're going to go to Aurora. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the Aurora XEX and we'll select that. Okay, now, we have to save it. Okay, it's very important that you save it. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit RB, okay, on top of the controller. And you're going to bring it down to HDD. You're going to hit X to save it. And then you're going to hit B to back out. This thing is going to reboot. And now it's going to boot into Aurora, okay? As you can see, there you are. Now, Aurora is already set up. You don't have to do anything to Aurora. It's already done. Okay? You just have to set it up the way that you want to. All the titles are done. Everything else is done, as you can see. Okay? Uh, there's a couple on here. Now, you see these two right here. These, this is a multi-disc game. So, we don't need all of them. Okay? We don't need all of them at all. All right? So, what we'll do is we can hide these like this. There we go. Okay? And then what we do is, is we can go ahead and we can hit Start button here. All right, no, wait a minute, B button for view, okay, because we don't want to see the hidden titles, so there we go, all right, now the hidden titles are gone, as you can see, all right, really simple, all right, this is the Xbox 360 folder, by the way, okay, now look, okay, it's kind of like FSD, pretty much the, the same, it's got the same things and everything, it's just that it's a little bit more polished, it's got a better database structure, um, it's, it, it's more supported, it's, it, it's the after, it's the afterbirth of FSD, okay, <clears throat> so, yeah, that was good. Now, all right, if you hit the back button, you'll see a context menu. There's your file manager for FSD, all right? <clears throat> well, for Aurora, I should say. It's just like FSD. There it is, okay? Back out of there, you have script, restart, reboot, shut down. And we're back out of there, okay? With the start button, this is the business end of this thing. Here's your assets, your profile, content, modules, language, security, and about, okay? It's everything that uh, you can set up your profile if you want to auto sign in. The content folder where all your stuff is stored and everything, it's all right there, okay? So now we'll back out of here, okay? Now, to bring up the other folders, all you got to do is hit RB or LB, one or the other, okay? And you get it, and you can hit RB once again, and it'll move it on over, okay? And then you just got to hit A, and that will bring up Xbox Live Arcade, okay? So we'll do this again, once again. And uh, there's emulators, all right? Your classic games. Your homebrew section, your indie games, and back to show all, which shows everything that's on the hard drive, okay? So, you know, pretty much, uh, it's the same thing like FSD, just a little bit more polished, okay? No big deal. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set this back to FSD dash for you, all right? So I'm going to hit RB. I'm going to hit RB again, and I'm going to bring it to, I'm keep hitting RB until I come to the homebrew section. All right, now I'm going to hit A. All right, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to run Dash Launch, okay? So it's going to start up Dash Launch now. I'm going to go back to Pass, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this default back to FSD Dash. So we'll set it back to FSD Dash, which is Freestyle. We will select the uh, default.xex. All right, now we're going to hit RB, and then we're going to bring it down to ACD. We're going to hit X to save it. We're going to hit B to back out. And now what's going to happen is it's going to run, F it's going to run FSD, okay? Really simple. All right, now, <clears throat> okay. Just to uh, show you the off hosts, okay, which I'm going to do quickly. All right, oh, uh, let's see here. Whoopsie. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sign in. Okay. Now, use uh, the player profile. There we are, we're signed in. All right, and I'm going to go to Xbox 360 games. Now, our off hosts, like I said, MW3, Ghost, so all that stuff, they all work the same way. The off host does. D pad left to open the menu, X to select, B to back out, D pad left to close the menu. Okay? Very simple. All right, now. BO2 also has two GSC menus. It has Jiggy menu for multiplayer, and it has Sentinel menu for zombies, okay? I'm going to explain that. But we're going to use BO2 to demonstrate the off host and those menus, all right? So, we're going to go into Black Ops 2. There's no special way to start it. Just start the, just start it up. Okay? And as you can see, we're bypassed. We're good. And we're going to start up, and here we are. And as soon as the Dolby label gets off, we'll be able to uh, demonstrate what we're, how we do. Okay? So here we go. Alright. And there we are. Alright, so we're going to hit A. Alright. And then what we're going to do, we're going to press the start button here. Okay. And we're going to select multiplayer. Alright. So here we go. We'll go up to multiplayer. Okay. Now you'll see some information pop up here stating that it's bypassed and your cheats are loaded and all that kind of good stuff. Alright, we'll go down to local and there's a BO2 cheats loaded. Okay, we'll go to local and we'll set up the bots. We'll use nine of them. 
Okay? Back out of there. All right, we're going to start the match. Now, remember, as I said, okay, the all post, the commands are the same for MW3, Ghosts, and DO2, and all that stuff, okay? So, D-pad left to open the, uh, open the menu, X to select, B to, uh, X to select, B to back out, D-pad left to close the menu. For Jiggy, you're going to hold in left trigger, push down on the right thumbstick, okay? And then you use, you're going to use A to select and X to back out of that. It's two different menus, okay? So, it can get a little confusing at first, but you'll get used to it, all right? So we'll start the match now. This will be a simple match. I just want to show you and demonstrate what we're having here, okay? And just to show you that it does work. Alright, so here we go. Alright. Now we're going to select the gun, of course. Alright, now we're holding on the left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, there's Jiggy. Alright, we're going to hit A to select. I'm going to use quick mods. It gives me a bunch of mods at the same time. Now I'm going to hit X to back out of there. Alright, I'm going to spice up the bullets a little bit. We'll use swarms and grenades. And we we'll use dog bullets. There we go. One of our favorites, okay? We'll hit X to back out of there. Okay, and we'll hit X to back out of there. Now to open the all post, I'm hitting D-pad left. There's the all post. I'm hit X to select. So I'm going to select all this crap with X in the D-pad. Alright, I'm going to back out of there. I'm going to select aimbot menu. I'm going to hit X. Turn the aimbot on. I'm going to go to on screen. I'm going to use visible warning, proximity warning, and target details. ESP menu, I'm going to hit X, I'm going to select, I'm going to put pyramids around them, I'm going to use the name, the distance, the weapon, and snap lines, okay? I'm going to back out of here, back out of here, and hit D-pad left, closes the menu, then when the, uh, when the snap lines turn blue, let them have it, okay? Much so good. See what I'm saying? Okay? As you can see. Then we'll press the, uh, the, the L button to fly around here, alright? Here we go. Now we can just, like, let it loose to destroy everybody and everything, okay? As you can see. Works real good, too. Yeah. Okay. And now, if you want to be a complete be awaiting orders. maniac, okay, hold in the left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, aimbot, with unfair aimbot, and then pretty much you can shoot through buildings, schools, and everything else, okay? So there you go. The victory's mine, say it's me. Okay? Now, <clears throat> just like that, that's all done. Alright, I'm going to show you zombies in the room here, okay, so that way then you know what we're out here with zombies, okay? Zombies is a little different than this, okay? You're holding left trigger, push down right thumbstick to open the menu, and then you're going to use X to select, and then you're going to hold in left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, okay, to get out of the menu, alright? That's the way it works, okay? So we're going to back out of here, okay, yes, we're going to back out of here, we're going to go right directly to zombies, okay? We're going to hit A, and now that will take us to zombies, alright? Now zombies are going to start, you're going to see BO2 bypass, you're going to see BO2 cheat, uh, the cheats are loading and everything, okay? I'm going to go to a local game, alright? And here we are, okay? We're going to select that, and then we're going to select transit, okay? We're going to go to transit, alright? And then what we're going to do, we're going to start the match, okay? And like I said, with sentinel menu, you hold and left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, okay? X to select, hold and left trigger, push down the right thumbstick to back out. Okay, so we'll start the match now. Alright. Okay, what's going on here? Here we go. Alright, now. Okay. Away we go. Is the greener on? And we're going to start the match here. Okay. Good deal. Alright, you'll see some instructions pop up over here to open it. So, hold the left trigger, push down on the right thumbstick. There's the menu, okay? X to select. We'll turn on God Mode, Infinite Ammo. Um, hey. Bridge, Is anyone else? Double speed, no clip. Are the lights out? Okay. We'll toggle the aimbot. And then what we'll do is we'll hold in left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, that'll bring us out. We'll go to the weapons menu, X to select. Alright. We'll use one of my favorites here, which happens to be a uh, RPG. Great. Because you're fully automatic. See what I'm saying? Okay. And it pretty much automatically, uh, you know, targets your zombies and all that kind of good stuff, okay? So, now we'll hold in left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, okay? Now, you can go ahead, and there's you, there's all kinds of uh, stuff here, like the zombies menu right here. I mean, you can spawn them, kill them, you know, all kinds of good stuff right Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. How you doing? <laughs> okay. So, end of this life. All right, so on and so forth. Okay, you have the fun menu, models menu, zombies menu, power-ups menu, rounds menu, teleport menu. There's all kinds of stuff on here, okay? You know, players menu, all players, so on, so forth, map mods, and all that crap, okay? So pretty much uh, you're good to go on the, on the zombie side of this thing.
Then I will back out of here and we'll go back home. Really simple. All right. And now what we're going to do, okay, is this. We're going to go ahead and uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get this thing up online for the first time. Okay. Also, with the purge menu, when you start up GTA 5, it's going to give you a, uh, it's going to give you a text box message. And uh, you can choose however you want to open the menu. All right. Self-explanatory. Once you choose how you want to open the menu, just use your normal selections of A and B to back out and you're good to go. All right. Um, now, okay. Let me show you how we're going to put this online for the first time when you get this crazy thing. Alright, now this is very important. Please pay attention to this, otherwise you're going to be ripping your hair out and emailing me, okay? So, please listen to what I'm telling you, okay? When you first get the crazy thing, alright, what I want you to do is this, okay? Is I want you to grab hold of this drive door right here, and then I want you to pull on this hard drive and pull it out of there, okay? Now it says 120, it's actually a 500 gig, so, you know, but... Just a label. What am I going to do? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here with a needle and thread and stitch in 500 gig. All right. It's not happening. Okay. So anyway, pull a hard drive on it. Plug your power supply in. Plug your HDMI cord in. Now, when you boot this, you're going to get the stock dashboard. And that's what we want. We don't want the fancy dashboards or anything like that. We just want the stock dashboard. So now we're going to boot it up. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to sync up this controller here. Okay. System booted. It's a really fast booter. It runs real good. Alright, now, what's going to happen, like I said, is you're going to get to the stock dashboard, okay? From the stock dashboard, we're going to go to uh, system settings and network settings, okay? So here we are, we're good, synced up the controller, we're going to go up, we're going to go over, settings, system, okay? We're going to go down to network settings, click network settings, okay? Now, as you can see, my router's already selected, which is great and wonderful. Yours is going to pop up over here somewhere, okay? Once it pops up, I want you to click on it, put your password in, all right? When you put your password in, you're going to go ahead and it's going to automatically test the Xbox Live connection, just like this, all right? And what we want to look for is a check mark and two red X's, or two check marks and a red X. It doesn't really matter, okay? I don't care about the second check mark, all right? As long as this one is there, okay? Because this dictates if the Xbox can connect to your router. Your router is the gateway to the Internet, which is the gateway to what? Xbox Live. If you don't have this, you're not going to have these two. So, if you get three red X's right here, that's a bad thing, okay? You've got to get go into your router and find out why it's blocking the Xbox from getting online, okay? All these Xboxes use the same Wi-Fi connection. They all use the same Wi-Fi adapter, well, except variations of it. But this is what the Wi-Fi adapter looks like, okay? It's a pretty simple little device, all right? You can't change it. You can't do anything with it, okay? It's... A Wi-Fi adapter, okay? Now, if it works here, it's going to work there. Whether your router lets it online to do its thing or not, that's all up to you, okay? So you better make sure that your router is set up so then that way then this can get online on your local area network, okay? So what, you, what we're going to get is we're going to get a bunch of green dots here, and then we're going to get an X, and it's not even going to register over here, okay? Because it's all blocked and everything, all right? Which is good. We want this failed and blocked, okay? So, anyway... Once that happens, I want you to shut the system down, okay? Then what I want you to do is this. Okay, shut down. I hate background downloads. Okay. Now, I want you to take the hard drive. I want you to plug it in. You'll, you'll hear it click. And then close the drive door. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pull the power cord on this thing. And it's very important that you leave this out for five minutes. If you do not, you're going to wind up with DNS errors. It will, it will act like it's connected. But it won't be connected. You will not be able to get to live. Okay? So we have to flush the TCP buffers. So what we're doing is we're pulling the power on it. So that way then these capacitors drain. And this thing starts off with a fresh clean slate. Okay? That's why you leave this out for five minutes. Now me, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I don't have to though because it's already on my network. It's already on my Wi-Fi. Okay? So if it's on my Wi-Fi, everything should congeal and be okay. All right, although sometimes it has kicked me right off the network and said, nah, no, nah, your TNS is no good. And then I had to unplug it for five minutes. So, you know, it's like kind of like a crapshoot with me. All right, but it's there. So, now, after five minutes, plug it back in and then power the system on. Okay? Now, with an amazing amount of luck and the Xbox God smiling down upon us, okay, what will happen is the system will boot. Okay? Now, when the system boots, from which it just did, all right, you're going to see this green stuff moving around here. That's going to stop moving, okay? Once it stops moving, that means it locked on the server, which is good. That's a plus. 
Now we should see it boot up into FSD Dash. We should see some plugins come across the bottom of the screen. Okay? It's very important that that happens. There we go. Okay, that's half of the battle right there. Notice I said half the battle, not all of it. Okay? So now, okay, we're connected. We should get another one from uh, from, per from the Purge server letting us know that's, that's off, and which we just did. All right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sync up the controller. All right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go on over, and we're going to go on over to the homebrew section. Okay? Now, we're going to click on the homebrew section, and then we're going to go to Xbox 360 dashboard. All right? Now, once we hit this and we start it, we should have a square that pops up with your name on it, which we did. That means she's live, she's good, she's got connection to Xbox Live, which is great. So, we go on, all right, and now what you're going to do is, if you have an existing profile, you can download it, okay? However, though, if it is a retail profile, okay, when you put it on a modified bootloader, which IE is an RGH, okay, you run the risk of losing that profile if God forbid the challenge server goes down or something happens, something freaks out or whatever it's getting wild up, get out. Go ahead, you furry little monster, get out. Okay. So anyway, so what happens is, okay, is you will uh you you risk you risk losing your retail profile. And if you paid for it and you worked hard on it and everything else, you don't want to do that. So what you can do, okay, is you can go ahead and in the interim you can make a modders profile. Go on xboxlive.com slash live, okay? Use uh, Outlook email credentials. Make your account, come back here, download your profile, okay? Really easy, all right? Now, once it downloads, it's gonna look something like this, okay? I'm gonna sign in, all right? You get the spinny circle of death, you'll see your profile uh, pop up over here, wave at you, life is grand, okay? It means that we logged in and we're good. We're all signed in and everything, okay? So now that that's all done, that's great and wonderful. Now, in the event that you download the profile and you're sitting there for 15 minutes and it's still not downloaded, okay, it means that it's not going to download. What that actually does mean is that it got corrupted during the download, okay, which does happen. It's, you know, it's the internet, hooray. Okay, it's also Microsoft, yay, okay. So what we have to do is we have to worry about that because if it corrupts, then we've got a problem. It means that it's not going to download. So what I want you to do is I want you to back out of that then, all right? And then what I want you to do is once you back, back, once you go ahead and back out of that, you're going to come here, all right? I'm going to show you how to fix it. You're going to go up, you're going to go over. You're going to go to settings, you're going to go to system. Then you, what you're going to do is you're going to go to storage, okay? Once you go to storage, you see the hard drive right there? What you're going to do is you're going to click on it with that. You're going to go to profiles, okay? Underneath this profile is where your corrupted profile is going to be downloaded. I want you to highlight it using the D-pad, I want you to hit A, and then what I want you to do, I want you to highlight, delete, and I want you to delete it right off the hard drive, just get rid of it, okay, because it's corrupted, it's no good anyway. Once that happens, then I want you to back out of here, back out of here, back out of here. What I want you to do is I want you to leave the hard drive highlighted, okay? Then what I want you to do is I want you to hit Y, okay? I want you to go to Clear System Cache, you're going to do it twice, okay, so we're going to do it once, there we go. All right, and then what we're going to do, we're going to hit Y again. We're going to go down to Clear System Cache, hit A. We're going to hit Yes, and now it's going to clear it again, okay? So now everything is cleared, we're good. Then I want you to back out of here, back out of here, and then I want you to go up, over, back to social, sign in, sign out, re-download your profile, and it should work fine, okay? You know, so there you go. Once it downloads and everything else, hit the God button, all right, and go back to Xbox Home. Okay, now that will go ahead, that will bring back up FSD Dash, all right, and then pretty much you're going to be good to go, all right, and you're going to be signed in and everything is going to be right with the world, okay. However, there is a couple other things that you have to do before you can go off and go be a maniac or whatever, okay. With your profile signed in, what I want you to do is I want you to go over to the homebrew section right here, all right, and I'm going to explain this tool to you which is called XM360. XM360 unlocks all your downloadable content and all of your XBLA, okay? Now, the reason for the download on that, I mean the unlock on that, is because the simple fact is, is all of this stuff has to be hashed to this console and your profile, which means it has to be unlocked to this console and your profile. Now, uh, if you go ahead and you go to like a torrent site or you go to a website or wherever you go, all right, to download XBLA or downloadable content, let's say you got a game and you want to download some content and everything, you want to get it and you want to download it, okay? Well, that's all well and great. 
You can download it, you put it in the content folder, you put it in the title where, where, where the title ID is and all that. You put it in that folder, life is granted and everything. You think you're going to play it? No, you're not. All right, because what's going to happen is it could be downloaded on a hard drive, but it ain't going to see it because it's not unlocked to your profile and it's not unlocked to this console. That's what this tool does, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to start it up, okay? Now, we're going to have to give it a minute, okay? Because what's going to have to happen is, excuse me, once again, all day kitty, thank you, oh my god, all right, <clears throat> Grand Central Kitty Station here. All right, now what's going to happen is building an actual profile list of everything that's on the hard drive, okay? Now, once it does that, it's going to throw it up on the screen, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to unlock it, all right? Now, there's all your XBLA as titles, okay? What we're going to do is we use the D-pad, we go over, we go to unlock XBLA. Now, everything should be unlocked to this profile. So, as you can see, it's got a little padlock on here. So notice that it's all unlocked. So, we're going to hit A, okay? Here we go. Unlock zero Xbox Live files, okay? Which is good. That means that they're already unlocked, okay? So, we're good. We're going to hit OK. Now, we're going to go down and show DLC. I'm going to show the downloadable content, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead, we're going to show all the DLC. Then we're going to bring it over. We're going to bring it to unlock DLC. We're going to hit A. All right. Unlock zero because they're already all unlocked. Okay. So life is good. All right. So now, once it's unlocked, you're good to go. Whenever you download any DLC or XBLA, remember to come here and have it search the hard drive for the, for the downloadable content. Find it and then get it unlocked. Otherwise, you won't be able to use it. It will not show up. Just to let you know. Okay. So that's what you got to do. Once you're done, exit the dash. And it'll bring it back to FSD Dash. Okay? Now, as far as emulators are concerned, playable, no problems, whatever you want to do, it's all cool. Alright, I'll show you, uh, here we go, I'll show you an emulator here, just to demonstrate. Okay, under emulators, we'll use Game Boy Advance for, for an example. I'm going to hit A. I'm going to start it up. Okay, now it should start. I would hope. There you go. Okay? So now, here we are. It emulates Virtual Boy Advanced. Okay, so... All of those will hit games, and as you can see, there's all your games, all right? Now, you can hit the right trigger to go down page by page, left trigger to go up page by page, D-pad down, D-pad up, A to play, B for the main menu, or B to back out, okay? It's very simple, all right? So we'll back out of here, we'll exit the virtual boy advance, and of course, it's going to bring it back to FSD dash, okay? Now, as far as classic games are concerned, right, in order to play classic games, you must, and I repeat this, you must put the unit in bypass mode, okay? If you do not, what will happen is, is if you try to do it right like this, right from here, okay? Just with the server signed in, with this with this guide. See how this fan is, it's got a little fancy guide here and everything else? It means that we're, we're hooked up on the network, okay? We're on the server, the, the server XDX is loaded, everything's all cool, right? While we try to play a classic game, what's going to happen is you're going to get a big black screen. Why, you might ask? Well, I can go into complete detail, but I'm not going to because that will take too much time. It's very boring, okay? Basically, you got you got a, a red light, and it's going, and what, what happens is, is you don't have green on one side and red on the other. No, you have both two red lights, okay? So you're not going anywhere, all right? Yes, the power PC at its finest, okay? So now, what do we have to do to fix that, okay? It's very simple, all right? We power off the system. Okay, and what you're going to do, you're going to put it in bypass mode. What I mean by bypass mode is this, okay? See this right here? Okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to hit power. You're going to hit eject. You're going to leave the tray hanging out until it reaches the dashboard, whatever dashboard that you choose. Now, the system booted, okay? Don't push it in yet. Even though it did boot, okay, we're not going to push it in yet, okay? we got to wait for this thing to get to FSD dash. You will notice no plugins are loaded. Nothing will be authorized online or anything like that because we're not dealing with the internet anymore. Okay, we're, what we have is we have a local area connection which allows XBDM, allows you to connect Xbox, Xbox Neighborhood on it, you know, or FTP or whatever. So it gives you an IP address, but that's just local. It is not going out to the internet. It's not going out to Xbox Live. It's not doing anything like that. All right? So anyway, once we reach the dashboard, push the tray in, all right? And then what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead, I want you to sync the controller up, alright? And then what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and I want you to go over to emulate. Uh, no, not emulate, excuse me. That's about the classic games, alright? Once you go over to classic games, what I want you to do, I want you to hit A. Hit A once again. Notice the Xbox logo, okay? Started, thank God, okay? 
and there you are, the Need for Speed, the game's playable, and there you are, the original Xbox games playing on an Xbox 360. Pretty simple. It's got a compatibility file. Shut up! Okay. So anyway, there you go. There's the game, and everything's all cool. All right, now, to exit the game, all right, all you gotta do, hit the guide button, and there we are, and we're back at FSD, and you can play another classic game. Remember, if you have this thing in bypass mode, all right, uh, just remember that you can't get on the internet, all right, because we're in bypass mode. There's no connection to the outside world right now. Well, there kind of is, but there isn't, if you know what I'm saying, okay? But um, if you don't know what I'm saying, don't worry about it, all right? However, though, okay, what that means is that if you try to go to, let's say, let's say you play a classic game, okay, I'm done with that, I want to I wanna go ahead, I want to play with my friends and everything. Well, you can't just come back here, and you can't just go on to, like, GTA V or something like that and play it online because it's in bypass mode, all right? The only way to do that is you power it off and you power it back on normally, all right? Then it will connect to the internet, and then you will be able to play. Okay? Very simple. All right? So, Anthony, listen, thank you so much for your business. I do greatly appreciate it. We're shipping it off tomorrow. you have a tracking number by tomorrow evening. Thank you so much. Guys, thanks for hanging with me. I greatly do appreciate it. I'm glad you all watched and everything. And uh, I'll be looking forward to talking to you again. Uh, i got a bunch of consoles i got to build now, so uh, off I go. Anyway, you all have a good one, guys. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Uh... Those last minute uh, shopping sprees, and everything. try not to hurt anybody, okay? But at least wear your football helmet and some pads, handgun maybe, knives, whatever you need, okay? To get that last gift that, gift that you want from, from the overzealous grandma that's trying to get in there, okay? And, you, you know, look, worst comes to worst, kick or walk her out from underneath her, okay? And grab that pack if you think it's yours. Just remember that. Anyway, y'all have a good one. I'll let you later, guys.